Okay, so today's required practical. So we're going to be doing the second part of investigating resistance. And the learning outcome for this one is investigate how the arrangement of resistors in a series and parallel circuits affects the resistance of a circuit. Uh, yeah, it took me a while to work out this uh, picture. However, I do think the thing in boots is potentially a battery. I don't know. And the thing with small eyes that looks like some strange deranged dog is a uh, microchip. And the thing on the other side with a tie, yes, you're right, is a resistor. I knew some of you would get it. It's just awesome. So, today's uh, learning can be supported through the Caboodle textbook. And this is component characteristics. Look at that textbook with those beautiful graphs. So, here we go. Component, part of the circuit. Current, the flow of charge. And diode, only flows through the current to flow one way. Potential difference is the energy transferred to each part of the circuit by each coulomb of charge. And resistor. Um, limits the current in the circuit. Okay. Some example apparatus that you need to be aware of. This is my circuit. Beautiful. Notice that I have used straight lines. That would imply a ruler. In the absence of a ruler, because you're at home and not at school, borrowing our equipment, use the side of your phone, which I'm pretty sure is in your hand. The voltmeter measures the potential difference. The ammeter measures the current. The resistor, what we're testing, can, can be replaced with a lamp, then a diode. It's rock and roll here today, guys, rock and roll. So, what's the point of this practical? I hear you asking. I know, it's not even 11 and you haven't had a sandwich yet, but here we go. We're going to find out how the current and the potential difference change in different components. Awesome. So, some fun facts. So, variables. The independent variable is the potential difference across the resistor. The dependent variable in this case is the current through the resistor. When we're testing the filament bulb, the variables are going to be the independent variable, again, the potential difference across the bulb, and the dependent variable is the current through the bulb. See if you can see the pattern here. Then the di diode or the LED, the variables. The independent variable is the potential difference across the diode. And the dependent var variable, yes, you guessed it, is the current through the diode. And then the thermistor, the last one, the piece de resistance. Miss Madame Hughes would be so proud of me. The variables. The independent variable is the potential difference across the resistor. And you guess, the dependent variable is the current through the thermistor. And just because in case you were unable to, um, or if you're not paying attention, that should say light dependent resistor, but I haven't got time to go back and change it now. It's late. And uh, yeah. So go, this is a light dependent resistor. So the independent variable is going to be my potential difference across the light dependent resistor whereas my dependent variable yes you guessed it is the current through there are five different components that we need to be able to explain and we also need to be able to reproduce or sketch out those graphs that accompany our results so hold on guys it's going to get racy now so here's a practical so what we've got here is seven steps or maybe eight steps uh, and you don't need to learn um, a different graph for each practical but what you do need to do is memorize this not graph memorize this circuit and what we've got here is the resistor with the voltmeter measured uh, attached in parallel the ammeter attached in series and a variable resistor over here to the uh, right. So the rectangle thing here is my resistor. The rectangle with the arrow through it is my variable resistor, just so that everybody is on the same page. 
So we're going to connect the circuit as shown. We're going to ensure the power pack is set to zero. We're going to check that the voltmeter and ammeter um, are not measuring anything. So otherwise we've got zero error. And then we're going to use the variable resistor to alter the potential difference within the circuit. We're going to take different readings at different points. We're going to just move that variable resistor up and down and gently increasing it each time, recording the, um, the current and the potential difference so that we've got those two readings. We're going to increase it just ever so slightly so we've got nice small increments between our readings. Once we've got six, we're then going to do something crazy and flip over the power pack. Don't turn it upside down. Don't put it on it uh, on its back. All you're going to do is swap over the wires in the front. You're going to reverse the power supply. And what you should then see is a negative on your um, ammeter and voltmeter. Um, and you're going to repeat this again. So you get five or six readings so that we have the same okay on each side then you're going to plot a graph of current against potential difference for each component so you're going to repeat this for your LDR your diode your thermistor um, anything else that I haven't talked about anyway and then you're going to replace it with a fixed resistor with a bulb aha uh -huh. yes that was the one that I forgot about the bulb safety again the components get really hot between each one so you mustn't touch them and you've got to allow them to cool down between each experiment. You mustn't allow the current to go over one, otherwise it just burns out the components. They're not expecting you to remember that one amp, but they are expecting you to remember the term overheating. And always switch off the power supply, disconnect the battery before building or changing your circuit. Okay, because there is a risk. There is a risk that the current, the amps, could kill you. Okay, if you think about it, lots of people die every year by licking a battery. Why would you lick a battery? I don't know. But lots of idiots do it. Don't do it, guys. But a number of people give themselves a good old shock uh, licking a battery. Right, so some results. And you do need to be able to reproduce these graphs. So the first graph here we've got is um, for our fixed resistor. So what we've got here is... Um, a line, a straight line going straight through the origin. And the purpose of reversing the the wires or reversing the power on the power pack is so you can see what happens when that when you do this. So what you see is what you've got above, that it is directly proportional to current. So here is the term. So linking it back to Ohm's law is if you double the amount of energy in the resistor in the current twice as fast running through the resistor, the relationship is called Ohm's law. And this is true because the resistance of the resistor is fixed and does not change. A resistor is an ohmic conductor. Ohmic means it, it applies Ohm's law. Double the current, you double the resistance. Exciting stuff. Next one. What may this be, you may ask? So, this is my filament bulb, and that's a little bulb. That's not yet. That's a little bulb where you can see a little glowing wire inside. Okay, and if you double the amount of energy, it does not cause the current to move twice as fast. But the more energy you put into the bulb, the harder it is for the current to flow, and the resistance of the bulb increases. As the potential incre difference increases, so does the temperature of the thin wire inside the bulb. The higher the temperature increase, the vibrations of the ions of the filament, which make it go harder for the electrons. Now, um, I just want to point out the words that are in bold are what we call eight, nine keywords. And if you're looking for an eight or a nine, you need to be using those specific words because they are keyword marked. You can chat about this in the exam as much as you want. Unless that word is there, the examiner is not going to give it to you. And unfortunately, physicists are a bit like that. Okay. Uh, sorry. And then we have another riveting graph. Now what I want to draw your attention to on this graph is that the line actually starts right over here uh, or to the left and it goes along the origin, okay, and then it goes through the origin and then converts. So if we were asked to reproduce this in an exam, 
you would need to make sure that you can show that it starts over here on the left. And this is a semiconductor, uh, semiconductor diode and it allows the current only to flow in one direction. So when we reverse the power pack, we have nothing. We don't get anything and you do need to be able to explain this. I'm going to put this here digest oh my god what have i done okay uh yeah go back to uh 10 minutes 20 if you want to read that bit so what may they ask us let me think pray tell they might ask you to explain the pattern for each component here are the patterns the resolution of measurements and the repeatability and reproducibility R equals V over I. The filament lamp's resistance increases if the filament's temperature increases. Um, these are the key points. And then useful links to this topic can be found here. Right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, hopefully none of you are doing any crazy required practicals at home. But if you do any exciting science, send us a photo. We always like a photo for the Instagram. All right, then, bye.